Whether you're an elite athlete who has the spotlight on you in high school, or you're like me, one of those players that's good, just not elite, and you're coming off the bench looking for more minutes, you need access to trainers who can take you to the next level, right? So today we're going to be talking to an expert in this field who does that, exactly that. He takes these athletes from a young age and he helps them go to the next level. It doesn't matter if they're already performing at an elite level, he takes them further. Or if they're the athletes like myself who are coming off the bench looking for more minutes, looking to get better, continuously getting better, he takes all athletes from a young age and helps them improve. We're going to hear all about it today on the Game Time Guru. So, what time is it? Game Time Guru! If you're sick of the mainstream sports outlets, well, so was I. So I started my own show. I'm Shane Larson, and this is the Game Time Guru. It's different than other talk shows. I'm providing a panoramic view on sports so you can see them through a different lens. So buckle up and let's go. Hey, what's up, everyone? Shane Larson here, host of the Game Time Guru podcast. I'm excited to have you with us, whether you are a seasoned listener of the show or it's your first time ever listening to this podcast. I'm excited to have you with us. Now, The only thing I ask is that you please leave me a review on iTunes, right? Five-star reviews with a little bit of feedback as well is it's always super helpful, and I'll explain why. Now we're seeing this this show just continue to grow, continue to grow, continue to grow as we bring on amazing guests like we have on today. But listen, we've now charted in the top 100 in the United States, and we've charted in the top 20 in Spain. Yeah, I'm telling you, we've gone global. Now, the goal is to make this the best sports podcast in Idaho. We're doing a great job as we approach 50,000 total downloads of the show, 79 different countries, though, guys, and we're charting not only in the United States in the top 100, but in the top 20 in Spain, right? So we are taking this show to the next level, and I just want to say thank you to everyone who has ever supported the show, subscribed, reviewed, and those who will review, right, after this podcast episode gets over. So just want to say thank you to everyone, and of course thank you to my guests. Now, this episode was done via Zoom, so we did a Zoom call, so you'll notice that when we start the interview, the sound is a little bit different than what it is right now. Please just pay attention to the the content of it. It's amazing as our guest shares all of his expertise. It's going to be a good one. Uh, Really appreciate you guys tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the interview. What's going on, everybody? Welcome out to the Game Time Guru Podcast. Once again, I am your host, Shane Larson, coming at you today with another amazing interview with another amazing individual. And uh, we're excited to get to know him better, get to know more about his business, what he's doing to help athletes in the sports world, and uh, kind of learn more of his story and uh, what's happened to, you know, throughout his career. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome on Taylor Bateman, who is the owner and performance coach at Off the Field. Taylor, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, Shane. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, my brother. So Basically, um, I came in contact with, with Taylor, just so you guys know, like just through playing basketball, actually over at the local gym that we have here in the Treasure Valley of Idaho. Uh, he would come over there and shoot hoops every once in a while. I didn't actually go to school with you in high school or anything, but that's kind of where I kind of met you and realized like, oh, this dude's awesome. And then I saw what you were doing uh, with the, the speed school and everything, and then kind of saw how you took it to the next level. So we want to get to know you a little bit better, Taylor, you know, and, and, and get to know your business model. But Obviously, I, I started playing sports with you. That's how we connected. And uh, I'm curious, what is your sports background? When did you get into sports? And when did you know that was kind of like your passion? Yeah, um, I mean, probably similar to, to you and, and most people. You know, uh, growing up, I played football, baseball, and basketball. Um, always thought I was going to go to the NFL. Um, turns out I was a little too slow, uh, a little too short. Um, but uh, um, through high school, played all, uh, played all three Um we dealt with a bunch of injuries actually in high school, went to the college of Idaho to go play baseball, um, had Tommy John surgery there. I already had shoulder surgery, uh, man, I was in physical therapy a lot, um, with, with some stuff. I don't know if I was ever supposed to be left-handed. I think my dad might've, uh, switched me when I was younger, trying to get me to be able to pitch. Uh, but, uh, so I, I, I got, I had three surgeries on my arm, <clears throat> um, you know, really late bloomer. Um, I feel like I was probably more athletic when I was 20 than a, when I was a junior, senior in high school. Um, and uh, really we had a big passion for physical therapy and coaching. I, I started coaching at Mountain View in the off seasons uh, in the summer times when I was playing uh, ball in college. And I knew that's what I want to do, work with kids. But I, I wanted to be, uh, you know, I love the physical therapy route because I spent so much time in there. Um, and when I got out, uh, took the GRE when I graduated, um, was about to go to uh, Idaho State physical therapy, um, had the test scores for it and everything like that. And, 
uh, met a guy who had an idea about working with kids and athletes like this and uh, kind of ran with it. Um, bought him out about four years ago. Um, learned a ton from him and we just, we just kind of moved our separate ways and been growing ever since. And now I've been lucky to kind of live uh, vicariously through, through, through the athletes that I have now. You know, that's, it's awesome that you said that. I hope you guys are paying attention right now. Like, so as you get to know Taylor throughout this interview, you're going to see it. It's super cool. Just for me, I know him personally, just from kind of watching him and being around here in the same, the same area. But for those who aren't in Idaho, Taylor's running this facility now that's hel he's helping athletes. And we're going to get to know more about that. But like, it's cool to see the whole story. Like you just said, like you started working into it, you worked your way into it. And then you bought him out a couple years back. Now you're fully running this thing. And we're going to talk about some of the athletes in just a minute about like, you know, who you've worked with and, you know, just the whole ins and outs of the job. But it's crazy you mentioned late bloomer. I just took a note there when you said that. Um, I just posted about this, about myself actually being a late bloomer when it came to athletics. You know, like I kind of went similar route. Like I was decent, but I never like, I wasn't like a freshman varsity player. In fact, I made the C team my freshman year in basketball at Eagle High School, which is a local high school here in the Valley. Uh, switched over to Meridian my sophomore year when the boundaries changed. I went the, went the route of sophomore as a sophomore, then JV as I was a junior on JV. And then I played varsity as a senior where I actually started to kind of mature. I led the league in three point percentage my senior year. And then, you know, after my, after I was about 2021 20, um, is when I really started to, to bloom, if you will. And so I think that's a topic that I actually want to touch base on with you uh, a little bit later in the show and ask your, your, your thoughts on those athletes, because there's, I, I actually feel like the majority of of athletes are like that um that you have a few that are they develop early but some don't so that's awesome to hear that you have that because i have that personal connection with you now let's talk about off the field which is the the company that you're running now it's the facility that you're running now we know that you have that passion for sports you said you get to live vicariously through your your athletes that you're helping now what is off the field and what's the age range of athletes that you're helping what what, what do you guys do for them yeah, so we're, we're an athletic performance company. Um, so we work with anything from the youth level all the way up to the professional level. So, so from seven-year-olds to the NFL. Um, we are, you know, are, are, we tried, you know, in the early years, we've been going strong for about seven years now. In the early years, we tried doing adults and, and kids and do these boot camp classes and stuff. And it wasn't our passion. And, and we wanted to be the best at what we did and work with kids. So we we pretty much shut down the adults. We have a few adults, you know, our kids, parents, but I mean, really everything that we do has, is going towards um, athlete, athletics, you know? So we have kids before school, 6 a.m. and then kids until 10 p.m. at night after school. Um, and, and I mean, the few professionals that we have here in the Valley, you know, there's, we, we've got about 40 professional athletes that we work with throughout the year, which is awesome trying to make it, uh, even more, but uh, I would say our biggest niche is that high school range. Um, you know, the guys trying to like, okay, I'm about to try to get a college scholarship or I'm trying to make that varsity team where those eighth graders coming in, you know, like, oh, I'm about to hang out with the big boys. Um, so that's, those are our, probably our biggest niche, um, but we work with everybody from seven to the elite levels and it's strictly based about, around athletic performance. I dig that. So just give everybody a little bit of insight as well. So I, I'm currently 31 years old. And when I was in high school, which doesn't seem that long ago, but it, it is now, which is crazy. It's almost been 14 years since I graduated, which is nuts. Um, it actually has been 14 years this year, which is insane to me. But the, th the fact of the matter is the facilities like Taylor's, which is off the field, we didn't have a lot of those back then when I was in high school. And I'm not sure, Taylor, if that was the same case when you were there. But like we had like, I think it was called the Athletic Training Center or Athletic Training. I can't remember, but it was like the ATC. And it was like, very rare that you heard people go into those things. And now it's now more people, you know, more of these athletes are taking it more seriously. You're seeing, you know, the facility like you have and, and people are going there. And I think it's super, super important uh, for athletes that really, really want to get better. Uh, we talk about it a lot on the show about the off season, like just the work you put in outside of just playing your sport and, and your school. Why do you think it's important for these young kids to start getting introduced into these types of workouts, this type of uh, athletic training, at a young age outside of just weightlifting in school and playing their sport? Why is it so important? Yeah. You know, we actually off the field, that's where the name came from, came from, you know, everything, uh, what you do off the field, you know, we think that's where you're going to get your success on the field or on the court, you know? So that's kind of where that, that name came from. And, and the biggest reason is, is because kids need to learn how to move, you know, uh, even at the, the high levels, like today, um, 
had a, a few Boise State football players in here. Can't really say names and stuff like that right now. But I mean, some of those guys, it's like they've had hamstring injuries, knee injuries, so their knees caving in, feet move, you know, moving in, in, in spots that aren't efficient. So uh, that's our biggest thing. If we get them at a young age, we teach them how to run right, how to decelerate right. But it's not just you know, a, a boot camp kids class or where they're just running into speed ladders. You know, if a kid's running with bad form, that's going to do more harm on his, on his knees than him squatting with weight on a good form, even at a young age, um, as long as we get him into the right spot. You know, stress on the joints the right way is, is something that's going to help uh, these kids develop the right way and then hopefully have an advantage on, on, uh, on, on their opponents. You know, ATC was, was great. You know, it was, I mean, every. Every, just like everything, we've we've molded our training is way different than what they did. It was just so expensive to go there. Um, the equipment they had, the, the, all these other different things they tried to give to you that it was uh, you just couldn't. It wasn't sustainable. Only a few people in the valley could do it. Um, so we broke broke down their model, broke down a couple other models in the in the country, and 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 came up with a one that we know we'd be able to have, have the kids that want to get after it. Because when I was younger, I, I went to ATC once but couldn't afford it. And I didn't want kids that wanted to get better like myself to be able to have to go through that same thing. So, but we got to run a business at the same time. And uh, so we really try to get the best we possibly could at coaching cues, teaching kids how to move. We take pride in having our kids have the best squat, clean running mechanics, uh, you know, fastest guy on the field or, oh man, she looks smooth when she's out there running in soccer. So that's, that's our biggest focus. Uh, and then, you know, as far as what, what they're doing and movement wise with us in the gym, it all just depends on where they're at in their season and what goals they have, or if they're coming off of injuries, you know, uh, we work really close with physical therapists. Now uh, they'll send us our, their kids, you know, post prehab or post uh, uh, rehab and, and physical therapy. They'll send us our kids to get them moving. Right. And it's uh, <clears throat> we've been pretty fortunate to, to keep the clients that we have and be able to grow the way we have. Man. I, I love what you just said about uh, the entire concept of like doing things wrong for a long period of time because you see that happen so frequently these days with 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 people just simply breaking down and I actually spoke with another person on the show uh, a couple months back about when when athletes start to really they really start to kind of deteriorate a little bit and it's when they start hitting the weights and usually that's in high school because they're not doing it right so then you even see a lot of a lot of people will you know that's cool they can squat 400 or, or even five bills at that point, and then they can clean 300 and they can bench this and that. And they, they all work on explosion and power, but they don't do it correctly. And then when they get to the next level in college, you see their bodies typically don't hold up. There's very few that actually can compete at the next level if they're not taking the right steps early on. And uh, man, it's, um, it's cool that you guys are you're taking them from a young age and really making an effort to, to get them in the correct spot. Because if you get to the next, next level, it's really hard to like retrain your body that's already in this zone of like the way that it works it's just the nat the natural like our uh, the way our bodies work the biomechanics it's hard to retrain your body to do something when you've been doing it the same way every like every year of your life um and i can i can attest to this like i've seen some of the athletes you guys even the young guns that are over there at your facility like i'll go and play basketball at an open gym and i'll see guys that have trained with you guys it's insane the difference in athleticism even just the simple body movements and body control that these athletes have these days compared to when they used to because they're training with you guys it's it's just crazy like the the euro steps and the way that their bodies move so efficiently um is, is so much different than what my body does now I, I sneeze and i blow my back out it feels but it's, yeah it's just so cool to see who you guys are working with and what you guys are really really doing what do you think is one of the most i guess uh rewarding parts about your job taylor that now that you've been in the industry for quite a while you know, <clears throat> you're 100% right on that movement part and, and, and those guys playing basketball with the older guys. I, I think the most rewarding part along with that is, is the, the, the mental side um, and the confidence. And we teach these guys how to set goals. We teach these guys, one, how to reach goals and be consistent with things and take responsibility for, for themselves. If they're late, it's not on them. It's, you know what I mean? It's, I mean, it's not on their parents. It's on them. Um, and uh, the you know, when we first started, I wanted every parent to call me and be like, oh, your son's so fast or your daughter just got so fast or my son's so strong. And, and we get those things, but they always come to us now about how confident their kid is or not. We try to take pride in, okay, you're going to go play later. You go play against that 30 year old. You make sure that Shane knows who you are. You know, we try to really actually teach them that, like you be confident on the court, like you, you've gotten better. You, you deserve to be the best on the court or on the field, you know? And, 
And when we see that transfer on the field, we see their parents talk about it. And this kid finally takes his hands out of his pocket, stands up with his chest up. Uh, you know, that's, that's now it's kind of even morphing into what I'm doing more. I'm training a little bit less because I have some great coaches, but uh, I, I'm more focusing on one-on-ones with our kids on the mental side of it, breaking, uh, uh, you know, figuring out what, you know, why they're scared of these things or, or what they got going on at home. And okay, how do we, how do we either feel that or adjust that to, to make us have success on the court? I think, I mean, I get more enjoyment out of that more than the actual speed and strength training now. And I, I would have never saw that seven years ago. You know, it was all about, I was slow. I'm going to make these kids fast. I was weak. I'm going to make these kids so strong and so powerful, you know, and now we, we're doing that. But when you get to the confidence alongside of that, it's almost like they're, they're cheating when they're on the field or the court, you know, we have a huge advantage. hundred percent, man. The, that is a, it's a great point. In one of the books I was just reading recently, we were discussing the whole concept of like uh, performance anxiety. And I think for a lot of athletes, especially young athletes, I mean, they deal with so much in life. They could be the biggest, strongest, fastest, but sometimes they still have that performance anxiety when they get to the actual game setting, when they get there to, to actually perform. It's oh, it, That's what they call the practice all Americans. They don't, they don't perform, yeah. games, but they're practice all Americans. And I'm just curious, like you, you mentioned the confidence side, what, what's something that you can, you know, instill in your play? Like, how do you do that? How do you get through to these players to like help them have that confidence, like show them that they've earned it, that they should be out there and then, and play with that confidence. Cause to say it's one thing, but to actually do it's another. And I'm just curious, what, what's one of the like tips that you give them? You know, it's crazy. Uh, we, we've been trying to really put our thumb on that or pencil that down and what we've come down to. And like I said, at the beginning, we didn't even see this happening, but we, I would, like I said, I wasn't the most athletic kid in the world, but I wanted it so bad. We have most of the time a kid comes to us, they're like that, or they're an athletic kid who wants it really bad, you know? And when we get those, that's the rare occasion, D1, maybe professional guys, you know, that have, that have everything going for them. But, you know, uh, when, when we, we, I believe in them. I'm like, oh, look, did you just feel that? Like, oh, now if you do that, now you can go hang with these guys are do this. Okay. Let's, let's, how do we repeat that? How do we get this? How do, and, and when they start doing it, we let them know, you know, with us, we, it's more pick, picking them up. And it seems like it's so small and you, it's cliche now, but like coaches, when you're a head coach, I think you do have to be, uh, a, a, you know, discipline your athletes and, and kind of get on them and do things like that. But how you do it is huge. We, we believe in them. We, they think that they're our favorite athletes, every one of them, you know, they think that, and they are. We love all of them. And that we, we think they're the best athlete in the world. So when they leave, they're like, oh, man, I was just pulling the sled next to, you know, uh, Shiloh Kao. At, and, and I was doing TV routes with the guy that plays in the Super Bowl. I can go – I'm going to go crush these dudes on Friday night. Um, I think it's us just be- believing in them that, like, we, just because we see them in there, we take pride in them. You know, they're like they're, – they're my sport now. And them just having a little bit of somebody believing in them like that, you know, not the parents, every parent thinks their kid's going to go play for Alabama. But, you know, I think when there's an outside voice and outside eyes talking to them, like, Hey, you got a chance to go do this. You know, we, we, we might be able to get a college scholarship. We might be able to do this. They just, they feed off of it, you know, and we, everything, every workout we have is about progress. It's not just, like I said, show up, get, do some burpees, and then bam, you're out of here. You got a good workout, but it's like, okay, did we get better today? Did we get a step faster? Did we add a pound on that squat or on that bench? And, and when they start feeling that and we get excited for them, it's, it's just I wish I had an easy way to say it, but I think as soon as we believe in them, which is from the beginning, it's, and, you know, they can never really have – everybody starts for us. That's the nice thing when we talk to coaches. Uh, you know, when a coach has to deal with kids who don't have playing time, everybody plays for us. So it's, it's easier for us than a, than a coach, but we just make them all feel like, man, this guy is the, the best athlete that's ever been in Idaho. And they just, they feel that, you know, I dig that. And that's like, it speaks volumes to the way your, your model is set up over there because um, I've seen, I mean, there's other facilities that have popped up here and there in the Valley, um, you know, and it's crazy because people will talk about, you know, T over at off the field, like Taylor over at off the field, like that's where we go and stuff. And there's a reason that a lot of people choose to go there. And I think what you're talking about kind of shows why it shows that you guys actually have that personal connection with them and you're instilling that confidence in them through your actions and your, your person, you know, your personalities and the fact that you can relate to them in a sense. And I think that that speaks volumes to, to you guys and what you're doing. Um, it's crazy, man. I, again, I, I can't even say enough. Like when I watched the kids that you guys had, like when I used to work out and you guys had the facility next to the, like in, in the gym, I'd see the workouts you were doing with these, these kids. I'm like, man, I never 
never did these things when I was this young. Like I should have been doing this. I can't even right. imagine what I'd be doing. And it's cool because you can actually see those, those youngsters, they just have confidence because they're putting in work that a lot of us never did. They're putting in work that a lot of, a lot of athletes aren't doing. Like a lot of athletes still do what I used to do, you know, play during the season and shoot some hoops during the off season and then get back to it during the season. Again, like you're not really putting in that extra work that way with trained professionals like yourselves. And you can see those kids are like getting the confidence in themselves just by being there. Like you said, it's just the power of their surroundings. It's really, really cool to see what you guys are doing. Now I wanted to circle back real quick, Taylor, to the discussion on the late bloomers, you know, talking about those who kind of blossom, uh, they bloom into their, their maturity at, a, at an older age. And, you know, I was one of those kids. I graduated, I was 16 years old as a senior for like four days. And then I was 17 when I graduated, I was always closer to the grade behind me, like the students in the grade behind me, but I always like, you know, played ball and everything my whole life with the guys ahead of me that were in my actual grade. And I remember like, it wasn't until my senior year till I actually started to kind of like come to, but I still wasn't physically as mature as some of those guys. And then as I left out of the country for two years for a church mission, come back, started hitting the weights more, my body matured. I could finally dunk a basketball, those types of things. When I was 21, 22 years old, I was like, dang it, dude. The way that the system's set up nowadays, it's like high school, college, professional, if you want to go to the professional route. And it's unfortunate for some people because there are a lot of kids that like blossom, like when they're 19, 20 years old, when their bodies mature. So I'm curious what your thoughts are there. What would you say to those guys who are younger, like myself, who were kind of young, their, their, their bodies hadn't matured. Maybe they didn't dominate in high school, but they were good enough to at least be good, but didn't have any offers. And like, do they have a shot still if they, if they're 18, 19, 20 years old, still trying to make it to the next level? You know, actually, um, I, you know, hundred uh, percent, I think now because there's so much exposure with, I mean, there's a lot of different things you can say bad about social media and club sports. Uh, but one thing it does do is it gets, gets their names out, you know, coaches hear it and coaches see it. Um, uh, even if they don't want to see it, a coach says he doesn't like Twitter, doesn't like social media or club, they want their kids to play high school sports. I mean, they, they see them in high school and they see them moving. If we get asked all the time, like we write letters of recommendation for our athletes and different things like this and coaches will call us. And it's always about their work ethic. The fact that they know their kids been coming in three days a week in season at 6 a.m. They're like, okay, this kid's projectable. He's got a chance. You know, the red shirt, um, you know, when we're coming out of high school, I don't feel like we realize how important that is. But we coaches talk to us about projectability all the time. They've, t I mean, I, I bet uh, I've probably had five or six coaches where they're like, how about this guy? And I'm like, oh, yeah, he's good. You know, I don't know about at that level. And they're like, well, just, just look at him. He's got a chance to do this and that. And I'm like thinking about it and looking at him like, well, shoot, I guess in two years, 25 more pounds, you know, a couple more inches, he's got a chance. So I, I, I really do think if a coach sees you and he knows that you are a grinder, they will take a risk on you. You know, obviously there's the, I mean, the extremists, the Zions of the world who are a freak, but in Idaho, you know, I think we are starting to get a little bit of love because our kids do have to work for what they're getting. Uh, they, you know, they do have to work to get any of the exposure that they do have, you know? And so if they have a body where it's like, okay, this kid doesn't have a full beard, this kid's not uh, or, or, you know, uh, even with our, some of our younger uh, female athletes that are, I mean, we have so many division one girl soccer players. It's amazing. But when they see that and they're like, oh, you know, we, we have two seniors or two juniors right now that are, this, that are awesome and this kid looks like he could be her in three years or him in three years, we're getting a lot of that now. And, and I think the biggest thing is, is they have three, five or above on their grades and they're the first one to practice, last one to leave, and they're doing all of the little things, you know. And that's, to me, that's, uh, we just had, for example, uh, Logan Miller. He's a Timberline baseball player. He's 10, 10th grade, going to be a junior. First kid we've ever had. He signed to Oregon. He just committed to Oregon State for baseball. It's crazy. Um, if you guys know anything about baseball, that's like going to Duke for basketball from Idaho. It's, it's nuts. Um, if you walked in the gym, he's actually in, he, no, he's not in here right now. He's in here earlier. If you uh, walked in the gym, he's he's six foot, one hundred and sixty pounds, soaking wet. But the kid is the hardest working guy in the world. He's the leader of the team, even as a sophomore. And he's so projectable. I mean, he's obviously very talented. He's going to Oregon State. But you couldn't tell uh, just off a of first glance. And, and coaches, are, 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 I think, are taking risks on that now. They've had a lot of the high-profile guys that have just washed out and not been a team player. So we try to talk to our guys from the very beginning. And, and we've even get, given money back to kids that don't buy in and get in bad grades. And if they're not 
bought into the whole process. We'll we'll give them their money back and say, sorry, this is just, it's not for us. You're gonna have to go for somewhere else because your goal is to get a scholarship and you're just not doing the little things. And I think it's now coaches really like projectability. You know, I wish I would have said, like you said, if we would have had something like this, somebody see that in us, you know, uh, hey, you're gonna go, you're gonna go red shirt. You might even walk on, but go take a chance, you know, and, and we're getting a lot of love. A lot of our kids on missions, like you went on, some people think it's a really bad thing for the that I can think of six kids that I have that came back on missions that are playing at division one schools, one double A or division one schools, you know, they come back matured and killing it. Keiko Namahini, who's starter as right the day off he came off his mission is for example at Boise state. So right. I think if you work hard, man, you got, you got a chance. The late bloomers, sometimes they got a chip on their shoulders that the talented guys don't have. So I think we use that to our advantage. I dig that, man. I think that's awesome. And uh, it's funny you mentioned Kekoa. He'll be on the show as well. Um, I got an interview with him next week. So by the time this launches, his will be the next one after. So that's going to be cool. I love it's it. Interesting that you mentioned that. Um, Great. Guy. So, so Taylor, that's, that's really insightful. Like, and you mentioned club sports and just like talking about, just so everybody understands, like, I don't want to be like sitting here talking about like, oh, Idaho is woe is me, but it is kind of like we do, like we have a struggle to get the exposure. Now we're getting better, like you said, and it's one of those things like as time goes on, but we don't get the love that a lot of other people do. And we've got some pretty talented athletes. It's just, it's just the nature of the game though. But I'll, I'll tell you guys one thing. I was doing play-by-play -play announcing for the Northwest Premier Invitational. And last year I was sitting there doing the, doing the play-by-play -play for it. And some of these, these high school basketball players were, you know, they were getting on the court and I was walking by them before the game started. And I'm like, this guy's supposed to be like their number one player. I'm like, what? Like just by the looks, right? And looks can be deceiving because in that exact same game, I won't mention the name, but uh, he signed a college scholarship and uh, that just after this last season. And this, this kid threw down a dunk. He's no taller than me. He's like 6'2", 6 6'3", 6 throws down a dunk in the lane, in traffic, have you, without that much of a gather either. And like the kid was explosive. So like we've got athletes here, man. And obviously he's putting in work outside of just his weight room at the school like he's doing trainings with everybody else and uh it's it's kind of cool to see like we've got athletes around here and you guys are you know you should be credited for a lot of that because you're helping these guys it's it's crazy now also the club sports topic is one that i've talked about a few times on the show and uh it's it's interesting because i didn't the club sports weren't huge back when i was in high school at all in fact we had like one club team and that was boise flight for basketball we had club soccer but basketball it wasn't now everybody's got a club team and so it's, it is it's good for exposure around here it's it's super good because it gets them that exposure they need it gets them the reps that they need and then what I was thinking too as you're talking the the athletes that decide to kind of work with you guys you and your team over there I mean you're kind of like they're an advocate for them as well where they might not have had that elsewhere so coaches might be talking to you and that gives them another voice of uh just somebody to kind of put on their resume is like, Hey, we'll go talk to T over at off the field and he can help me out and like give you some insight as to what I've been doing, blah, 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 blah. Whereas if you don't do that, you don't have that, you know, voice to kind of talk to, to a coach. So it's kind of a, an interesting, you know, sense of networking opportunity, as long as you're putting in the work from what I can understand, Taylor, like you're one of those people that will stay, if you're, if your players are putting in the work, you'll stick up for them. hundred percent. That's our, I mean, our, our resume is kids getting scholarships. So that's, that's our, that's our biggest thing. So we'll, we'll do everything that we can if we know they're, they're doing uh, their, their part. I love that, man. Now you've worked with a ton of athletes, man. We want to get to, to this point here, tons and tons of athletes over the years. And I want to know some of the stories that you've got, some of the athletes you've worked with, some of the success stories that you've had at off the field and during your time in this field of work. And tell us a little bit about that so we can get to know some of it. Cause that's kind of cool. Like it's a rewarding job, I'm sure. So we want to hear some of those stories. Yeah. When you, you wrote that, I was like, shoot, I didn't know where to start um, before this meeting when, you know, but uh, I figured, you know, so a guy, Cody Riley, he's actually my general manager now. Uh, he's working for me. Um, just, just an absolute stud. So he was the first athlete that I had his junior high, junior high school. Um, I coached him when he was in baseball. That's why I went after him because I just started the company and I, and, and, and I love the way he worked, but he was, you know, five, eight, 135 pounds. But, uh, so his junior year of high school, he, you know, he started on varsity, but he's playing second base, which in Idaho usually means that you're not good enough to play shortstop. Um, he hit in the eight hole, which is the worst spot to hit in. Sometimes you got to hit in the nine hole, which is a little bit better. He, and he went to his coach and asked if he could go play college baseball. And his coach told him that he couldn't. 
um, you know, he came to me, we started talking and I was like, well, we got two options. We go as hard as we can, see what we can do. Uh, or, uh, or you just, uh, you know, have fun your senior year and go to Boise state. Um, he's crazy smart kid. So he's going to be fine either way, but he went to work. He did everything I said. He was a test dummy for me, man. I beat him up and, uh, he put on 38 pounds that off season. He ended up being first team all state played, uh, he had two division one guys on his team. He hit better than those guys. He hit in the three hole, um, or top of the lineup. Can't remember exactly where, and then played four years of college baseball and now he's my right hand man. He's he's he helps run the business. It's it's crazy to see. I coached him all the way through college, and and now he's he he was a, he's the biggest testimonial for me. So it's easy for him. I didn't even have to teach him anything. I mean, that guy could sell off the field better than I can. So it was uh, that he, he's he, he's just the right guy. And even now, like I mean, he, if I tell him to do something and he can't figure it out, he's or he can't get it done right away, he's going to figure a way to get it done. And it's pretty awesome. Um, you know, uh, some of the coolest stories is like one that almost made me tear up. Two of the teams that we first started with, Timberline Baseball, Mountain View Baseball, you know, they, they played each other in the state championship, um, which was crazy. And they held my banner before the game. And if you know anything about those guys, they hate each other, um, which, which is, makes it even more fun. You know, it's a big rivalry. Uh, but they held my banner, you know, one team on one side, one on the other off the field before the game. It was, uh, it was pretty sweet. Um, that was that was a fun one. Um, yeah, man. Being NFL guys uh, have been re- have been really fun to work with. Shiloh Kale. Um, I don't know if you know that name, but he played. Uh, oh yeah, so Shiloh Shiloh won a Super Bowl for the Broncos. But that we we trained him for three years. I think while he's in the league, um, Idaho Sports Medicine Institute called me before I worked with him, and they actually uh, he had like a torn hamstring. And they're like, do you know how to fix this and do this on, a, on his running mechanics? And I, I had no idea what I was doing this seven years ago. And I was like, yeah, I can do that. I'll figure that out. So went to the books, figured it out. Um, he got better, won a Super Bowl. And now he's coaching at Alabama. He's been a huge part of our growth and our success. You know, he's the first NFL guy we had. So he, he was a fun one. But, man, shoot, there's so many, so many different – things we I mean just the kids that we have in here you know we're at max capacity which is obviously smaller right now because this situation but there's I'm just looking at five kids right now that got amazing stories you know that are thought they were hanging it up and now they're going to go play football in the NAI and, and, and it's pretty sweet that's so cool man like just so you guys know it sounds like okay so Taylor he's selling himself short a little bit there's a, I'm sure if I were to let him sit here for an hour he could go story by story by story by story because he's got a ton of different stories probably just similar to those ones right there I actually remember when you guys were working with KO because when I think Charlotte didn't he go to the University of Idaho yep yeah he was a safety over there um and I mean he he was like their main guy right because they didn't have a lot of success as a, as a team but he was super athletic it was a cool story coming out of Idaho um being able to go and obviously win a Super Bowl but yeah that's like that it, it, huge credit to you guys over there and, and the work you put in with him because obviously it, it helped because <laughs> like it, it showed on the field there's a lot of other examples like I've, I've interviewed guys like Ryan Watkins on the show uh when he's in town like he's he's put in work with you guys um he was just, in this morning was he really yeah he's in he's, he's my guy he's uh, he's my first podcast interview but actually myself he's he's uh I mean, I know you probably had an interview with him, but he is literally the best leader when he's in here. You know, we always say he's on the vet program because me and him are old, you know. But he uh, he outworks everybody every day, man. It's 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 crazy. He's he's just the most positive, coolest guy in the world. I love Ryan. That's so awesome. See, like that's what I'm talking about. Is like when I interviewed Ryan on the show, it's almost been a year now, and he was, you know, he's playing over in uh, the Asian Basketball. I think it was ABA, so the Asian Basketball Association. I can't remember. That's exactly what it's called, or the Asian Basketball League. It might have been the ABL. Um, but he's over there balling and, and Ryan had a cool story too. Like his, he had a unique journey up, up into college for that matter. And then obviously in, ended up playing in the professional realm and he's still putting in work and it's cool to see that he goes over there and he's, he's getting better every single day. And it's awesome because he's over there like, and you're helping him get better so he can compete at the next level, which is what, that's what it's all about, man. And I think it's super, super inspiring that you're over there helping these athletes like from younger guys all the way up to these guys who who are in the professional the professional world so I got a question for you then Taylor like of all the athletes you've seen you know you're talking young all the way through the older guys the vets like you just said um 
what do you think is one of like, if, if someone's going to come in there, wh- what do you see in these athletes that see the most success? What's one of their biggest traits that they have? Like that you would say, Hey, you need to model yourself from a mental, physical, whatever standpoint, like this person, because those are the ones who see the most success when they come through our program. What, what is the biggest trait that you see that they have instilled in them? Man, I, you know, it's the ones that aren't in here to work to be, you know, to be, to look cool against their friend or to, for their parents, the ones that want it themselves. Like if you find out what you want, like I understand maybe you love sports and you want to play, but maybe it's not your biggest passion, but the ones that see the most success are the guys that are in here grinding because they're trying to get themselves better. And they're not in here grinding because I'm trying to beat Shane in the 10 yard dash, you know? We have some guys that are crazy self-motivated. I'm here at 6 in the morning, 5.30 in the morning, and they're in the parking lot before me, you know. Uh, or Saturday and Sunday, they're like, T, two days off is too, too much. And they're not saying that because their coach is going to see them. We're not posting them on social media. We're not doing like that. They're, they think to, they, they want to be their absolute best. So I think when it's you figure out exactly what you want, not what you want other people to think that you look like or you you are or you're this person or somebody else wants for you those ones and we can tell pretty quick you know when they're working out they're not, they don't mess a rep up because they're trying to look cool because that person next to them is that deep they see that oh there's division one guys here but so now I got to be the cool guy they're they're in there like you know who cares about this guy I'm in here trying to get myself better you know those guys the the, the ones that are you know internally motivated themselves that's if you can find out what you want uh, and go after it as hard as you can. Those guys are going to see the most success. Heck yeah. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Just get the, the word out there for, for the types of athletes that will see success when they go through your program. And the last like little bit to, to wrap this up with you, man, I, for myself, I always want to reach different audiences and I want to make sure that the people listening, like if I'm a parent right now, my son or daughter, they're playing in high school and they might not have made varsity and they're on JV and they might not, like they have a lot of talent. They believe in themselves, I think, but they're just not, they're not even getting the minutes they deserve there because they, they just don't know how to perform. Is this a good program for them to go into is, or is it just for these guys that are like the elite players trying to make it to the next level, maybe the starters, or do you see a lot of success with the guys that are coming up, like through the, through the ranks, like playing on the freshman team, playing on the JV team, maybe not getting as many minutes. Do you see a lot of them kind of jumping up? Kind of like you mentioned Riley, like, uh, what did you say? Cody Riley, right? Yep. Yeah, you kind of mentioned his story. Do you see a lot of those coming up, like the ones that aren't necessarily the starters that are trying to make themselves better? Yes, you know, a ton. We always say we, we, we want to train the elite, and we always follow with them. When we talk about elite, it's the mindset. You know, we, we've had some kids that have came in and they've already, you know, got, received a scholarship or a couple from schools, but they're in here just to be in here because they've heard of our name and stuff like that. They're bringing the group down or they're bringing – uh, uh, the guys next to them down. We, we will, like I said, we'll, we'll tell them, we'll give them the check back or they got to, they got to figure, they got to, they got to change your mindset. You know, those ones that you're talking about, we kind of take pride in those guys. Like, okay, this guy was a sophomore last year, he played sophomore, maybe floated on JV. Let's, when he shows up in his coach sees him again, let's make sure that coach is like, oh damn, who's this guy? You know? So we, we love those guys. Cause again, they're, they're the ones that are, they're out there trying to get themselves better. They're like, okay, I got to figure this out. You know? Um, it is, you know, it's rare when we get the guys that are, we already know they're going to be division one. They got the big name and they come in and want to grind on their own. You know, we, we definitely have those guys and, and that makes things a little bit easier, but the, you know, it's, it's, it's so awesome. It's so fun. When, and those guys even recognize, okay, this guy might be an NAIA player, but man, he has got every ounce of athleticism out of his body he possibly can get. And this guy is killing it, you know? So those, we, we always want to train the elite mindset um, not just the elite athlete, but if, if you're in here just to try to stay in shape or get better, it's usually not the place, you know, for you. Um, and we can, you know, like I said, if we, we can weed them out real quick. The ones that, you know, that are in here cause they're trying to grind and change, uh, you know, maybe their life and through sports. Those are the ones that we want, whether you're in the NFL or whether you're, you know, you got cut from the JV team. I love it, man. I love it. I, I've seen it myself in, in my, uh, in my life, just kind of like being around the, the kids in the Valley and stuff. So if you're a parent and maybe your, your son or daughter didn't make their team like their freshman year, and now they're playing church basketball for whatever church league they play for or something, but they truly believe that they can play. They just need to get some additional assistance. That's what Taylor's team's for. Like Taylor and, and their whole crew over off the field, they're helping develop these athletes, but make sure you have the elite mindset. Like you said, like that's the type of people that get them in there to get them to the next level. This is a blessing that we have facilities like yours because 
you have teams that truly care about the athletes. You have teams that really want to make them better. And if the, if the athletes come in, it's obvious that they come in with the right mindset, you guys will do your part in making them better from the physical standpoint and performance standpoint. Now, Taylor, where can we find off the field? Like, where's the information? If somebody's like, okay, they hear this episode and they're like, oh, this is interesting. I, I kind of want to check more into this. Where can we find more information about off the field and what you guys got to offer? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we have a website and everything like that. It's actually in the process of getting uh, revamped a little bit, which uh, uh, hopefully before we finish it, I, we, I get to sit down with you and learn, learn from your success. But uh, so offthefield.com, um, it's in the name. Uh, but our social media, I think our Instagram and our Facebook are probably our two biggest uh, ones that we can look at. Our parents are more on Facebook and our, our kids are on Instagram. We try to push out a ton of, ton of content on there um it's mainly just us coaches and we're not the best at media but you can kind of see really uh what our culture is like and we kind of like that it's pretty raw you know i mean it's me cutting up a video on a phone and i don't don't really know what i'm doing there Uh, definitely something i gotta get better at but so i think social media is the best way to see it um and then just come by the facility we're right in the middle of meridian um i mean right now with this uh, uh you know covid situation we got going on we're we're at max capacity right now, which is pretty awesome with, with from 6 a.m. until 6 p.m. It's just back to back to back to back, trying to get kids in and out, keep everything clean and stuff like that. So you could come by and, and see it uh, see it rolling each day too. Awesome, man. I'm going to make sure we, we link this in the description as well so people can see where to find them on Facebook and Instagram. Last question for you, Taylor. Who was the most influential individual in your life? Who did you look up to as like either a mentor or a leader that kind of helped guide you into like, I guess the way that you, uh, the, the, the route that you took in your life? Yeah. Uh, two guys. First, my dad, man, he, uh, you know, he'll, he'll hate that I'm saying this, but he never even graduated high school. Um, and it was because of the, the, how, how we grew up. I mean, he pretty much had to start fending for himself around 14. Um, and man, he helped me go through a private school and college. My mom, both my parents, really, uh, they both came from nothing and have worked. I mean, they still work. I, I want to retire them one day. Those guys, they work so hard and they've done everything for me. And my dad, I mean, I'll call him in the building we're in. Hey, heaters bro. Okay. This is broke. And he's here in two seconds working on it. He might be complaining, but he's here grinding on it for me. So he was, uh, and he always, he made me always feel like I was, I could play in the NFL. All right. turns out he was lying to me, but uh, he, he, I could. So I, I'd say my parents, man, um, they were huge. And then uh, Luke Wolf in the athletics. He was, he's the AD now for Mountain View. Luke, when I was, he was the coach when I was at Mountain View. I was there the first year Mountain View opened up. I was, you know, 5'5", five, five, maybe 5'9", five, my junior year, you know, 6'3", six, six, now. So yeah, I was definitely a late bloomer. But uh, Luke Wolf always – for some reason, always took me underneath his wing, you know, always, uh, again, made me feel like I was better than I was. And, and now, I mean, even through business, I mean, we're, we wouldn't be where we're at if it weren't for him. There's so many guys, but I'd probably say my mom and my dad and, and then Luke Wolf. So awesome, man. I appreciate you sharing those stories with us, and I appreciate you joining us on the show. Again, guys, this is Taylor Bateman, owner and performance coach over at Off the Field. I'll make sure, again, to put the links in the description and – Uh, That way you can find him on his social media pages. And again, T, I appreciate you joining us and uh, sharing your expertise. Shane, thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And you guys know the drill. If you guys enjoyed this episode and you know that somebody can benefit from it, make sure to share it with your friends and family and anyone who's a fan of sports and sports performance, anything, share this with them so they can hear it. And uh, you know the drill. We'll talk to you guys next week. Guys, thanks so much for listening to another episode of my show. Now, if you could go and do me a favor, head over to iTunes, give me five stars and leave me a review. It would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your support.